As one of the few federal farms licensees in Congress and a small business gun store owner for over 30 years, I've had a lot of experience working with ATF. Our unalienable right to keep and bear arms, this fundamental freedom, is certainly under attack by President Biden and the ATF. With the new frame and receiver rule, the pistol brace rule, and now the most recent attempt at universal background checks through President Biden's executive order. On January 13th, the ATF finalized its pistol brace rule, which unlawfully treats firearms with stabilizing braces as short-barreled National Firearms Act restricted weapons, effectively turning millions of law-abiding gun owners, including many disabled veterans, into criminals in just 120 days. Unelected anti-gun bureaucrats announced a law -abiding, to law-abiding gun owners possessing these pistols with these attached braces that starting on January 31st, they have only 120 days to register, turn over, dismantle, or destroy their firearms. Failure to comply with this unconstitutional measure will result in up to 10 years in jail and a $250,000 fine. The ATF's abuse of rulemaking authority dangerously violates American Second Amendment rights, irresponsibly regard, disregards Congress's sole legislative authority, and reveals yet another uninformed flip-flop decision by anti-gun bureaucrats at the ATF. Back in 2012, pistol braces were determined legal to use and shoulder. The decision was reversed three years later in 2015 claiming stabilizing braces were, were illegal to shoulder, turning pistol-braced firearms into unregistered short barrel rifles. This, change again, this changed again in 2017 when stabilizing braces were once more determined to be legal to shoulder. And now here we are in 2023 as the ATF is yet again vilifying pistol braces and turning their owners into criminals, and in the process, destroying the hard work of entrepreneurs and small business owners like Mr. Roscoe. To help with this injustice, this week I introduced the Joint Resolution of Disapproval, H.J. Res. 44, under the Congressional Review Act with Congressman Richard Hudson, as well as the support of over 180 of my House Republican colleagues as original co-sponsors to repeal the tyranny of ATF's misguided and unconstitutional pistol brace rule. This ATF rule and every other form of gun control pushed by the Biden administration is nothing more than a thinly veiled assault on our Second Amendment rights. It is yet another attempt to advocate backdoor gun control in order to disarm our nation and dismantle Americans' Second Amendment freedoms. The intended end result would be an unarmed America, which would make for a less safe and less free America. Mrs. Swearer, will the ATS pistol brace rule reduce crime and save lives, do you think? Almost certainly not. Uh, in fact, it's, it's mostly liable to create felons where there were not felons before instead of uh, attacking violent crime as it currently exists. And by the tens of thousands of them. Yes, sir. Uh, so if the intent is not to reduce crime and save lives, what do you believe is the purpose of ATF's pistol brace rule? Uh, I firmly believe that the intended purpose is, is simply to try to do do something, if you will, about gun violence in the, the, the typical way of, well, look, we, we've done something. We've regulated more. The, the problem is the regulation is not directed at the violent criminals themselves. It's mm -hmm. directed at millions of peaceable citizens who are not and never were the problem. Meanwhile, um, to the extent that it is regulating these devices for would-be violent criminals, well, congratulations. They, they have a plethora of other ways of either obtaining that same firearm, because if, if they're not prohibited and just bent on violence, they can pay the $200 tax and they still have the same firearm, so we haven't even cut down that option for them. Or they can turn around, as most of them do, and, and break other laws, obtain firearms off the street uh, with pistol brace or no pistol brace, NFA or not NFA. Um, and as most of them do, they're, they're already not using these firearms. They're using non-NFA firearms. Right. Um, they, it just is not directed at, remotely at any part mm -hmm. of the problem. Uh, Mr. Bosco, in 2012 and 2017, the ATF found pistol braces were not subject to the National Firearms Act controls. Has the basic design of stabilizing braces changed over the last six to ten years? The brace has been the same thing that I've done in 2012. It is a piece of rubber that attaches to the back of a firearm with two flaps and a strap, and it allows you to fire the weapon more safely. It does nothing to change the lethality of the firearm. Oh. Okay, so why do you think ATF flip-flopped and then flip-flopped again on the decision process concerning the legality of the pistol brace accessory? Because the political winds at the ATF changed. That's simply it. They needed to do something, anything, and the one thing that I think a lot of people wanted to talk about was the brace issue. And they talked about it and the, the, the process through which they're doing it is this promulgation of regulation. 
And now, after I don't know how much time, I mean another two weeks, three weeks, two months, 10 to 40 million Americans will be criminals. Gentlemen's time is Thank expired. Thank you.